नमो बुधाय दिस इज अभिनव गुलेचा एंड आई वेलकम यू आई कंटिन्यू विथ माई लर्निंग ऑफ द धम्मपाद वर्सेज दिस इज फ्रॉम वर्स टू फोर्टी वन टू वर्स टू सिक्सटी दैट आई विल कवर इन दिस वीडियो धम्मपाद द एंटायर सीरीज ऑफ धम्मपाद वीडियोज इट इज कवर्ड एज अ प्ले लिस्ट यू विल फाइंड अ प्ले लिस्ट ऑन माई यूट्यूब चैनल द नेम इज धम्मपाद एंड इन दैट प्ले लिस्ट ऑल द धम्मपाद वर्सेज वर्स वाइज इट इज अरेंज सो यू कैन चेक दैट Uh, I am re- referring the book, uh, Dham- the Dhammapad uh, by Eknath Iswaran. Uh, it's a very good uh, translation that you can also uh, read for Dhammapad, right? So let us start verse two forty one. Now these verses are based on impurity, right? Two forty one to around two fifty five is for impurity. So the theme of the verses is impurity. So Buddha says the Mantram is weak when not repeated. A house falls into ruin when not repaired. A body loses health when it is not exercised. The watchman fails when vigilance is lost. So Buddha is saying the importance of regular, consistent practice. Without practice, without our mindfulness practice, our without practice of our dharma of, of the noble eightfold path, we will also decay like this, right? So Buddha is giving various analogies of a mantram. a house a body watchman right so we have to be diligent in our practice otherwise we will get lost right our practice will be become weak verse 242 243 uh, buddha says lack of modesty is a drawback in women lack of generosity ta- taints those who give selfish deeds are without merit here and hereafter but there is no impurity greater than ignorance remove that through wisdom and you will be pure so here buddha is is saying about drawback drawbacks right that lack of modesty in case of a woman lack of modesty is a drawback in case of a person who gives uh, a lack of generosity the intention of generosity if a person even gives without the uh, intention of generosity then it is a drawback selfish deeds if anyone does any selfish deeds which are they are they are totally without merit you don't get any merit by doing selfish deeds right but buddha says the importance of the 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 magnanimity of im- ignorance as an impurity see if you see the dependent origination uh, uh, what buddha has said about dependent origination everything originates from everything else and everything in fact originates from ignorance right ignorance that everything is impermanent so ignorance causes mental formations mental formations causes consciousness and name and form and all those things are caused so this whole creation is created because of this ignorance that we have right so so this is the greatest impurity that buddha is stressing again go back to the noble truth number 2 where buddha says the cause of the suffering is craving and the cause of the craving is basically ignorance ignorance of what ignorance that there is no independent self right things are all all changing we ignorance of this fact that everything is impermanent makes us think that we are solid and the other thing is also permanent we are also permanent and then we get these cravings right so that is the biggest impurity that we need to remove how to remove that through wisdom right so the threefold paths uh, the the three elements of the noble eightfold path is ethical conduct mental development and third is wisdom so for wisdom to arise we have to do proper proper ethical conduct that means following the five precepts and then proper mental development through meditation and then the wisdom arises i have made another video on insight meditation you can check that just take the path of insight meditation which is based on the satipatthana sutra and do the meditation get the wisdom that everything is changing or we can also contemplate that everything is changing in nature also nature can also learn us teach us so much right so buddha says remove that impure uh, ignorance through wisdom and you will be pure verse 244 245 buddha says life seems easy for one without shame no better than a crow a mischief maker who is insolent and dissolute life is hard for one who is humble gentle and detached who tries to live in purity so this is how life is for a person who is mischief maker and you know uh, all these things who is not a good person unscrupulous people for them life is easy apparently easy because right now they don't know the impact of their evil deeds that will come but 
yes life is hard for people who follow the dharma people who are humble gentle because there is a lot of pull and pressure from the world you know uh, 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 against you know uh, the practice of dharma right so person who follows the practice uh, with the follows the ideal of dharma the buddha's path will face some obstacles and he will try to live in purity but but life will be life is hard this is a this is a fact that buddha is saying see buddha is not pessimistic he is always realistic right how if you are a follower of the dharma then you know that life is not easy there are a lot of choices you need to make and difficult choices to stay on the path right okay verse 2 to 46 to 47 to 48 are linked so buddha says they dig their own graves who kill lie get drunk or covet the wealth or spouse of another those who drink to intoxication are digging up their own roots any indiscipline brings evil in their in its wake know this and do not greed let greed and vice bring you lingering pain right so again buddha is comparing those people so remember the five precepts no lying no killing no lying no stealing no sexual misconduct no drinking you can check my video on five precepts so these are the five things that every lay person for monks there are eight or even more precepts but for for us who lay people five things we cannot we should never kill we should never lie lie to anyone make false speech we should never take what is not given we should not do any sexual misconduct right just be loyal to one partner and don't do adultery or extramarital affairs or incest or you know those things and no alcohol no drinking now so buddha says who people who do all these things they are digging their own graves that means they do not know the kind of karma that they are they are creating so buddha is always buddha is very clear whatever you do you will reap there is no one who is who will come in between right we all are just you know we will all follow us ourselves as our karmas lead us to right so they dig their own graves those who drink to intoxication are digging up their own roots right those who covet the wealth or spouse of another that means those who steal or do sexual misconduct right those who drink to intoxication those who get intoxicated are digging up their own roots any indiscipline brings evil know this and do not let greed and vice again simple thing buddha is saying do not fall into this trap of greed and vice and everything right verse 249 buddha says some give out of faith others out of friendship do not envy others for the gifts they receive or you will have no peace of mind by day or night so important that and these are some few verses that buddha has said on jealousy right i will find out uh, you know all what a buddha has said on jealousy i will try to research it and make a detailed video on jealousy what buddha said on jealousy but here buddha is saying do not envy others for the gifts that they receive because if you envy them you will hurt your own peace right so what we what is very important friends is that we protect our own peace at any cost right do not compare ourselves because comparison leads to jealousy right then our mind gets stuck so let them others get the gifts that they want rejoice in the gifts that you have and most of mostly what happens is when we compare we forget the the kind of gifts that god has given us right or if you do not believe in god then the kind of gifts that you have with yourself right so just rejoice in that focus on that verse 250 buddha says those who have destroyed the roots of jealousy have peace of mind always right verse 251 there is no fire like lust no jailer like hate no snare like infatuation no torrent like greed so buddha is comparing the various uh, negative qualities to like fire buddha is comparing fire no fire than lust no jailer like hate It's prison you create a prison for yourself when when we have hatred and all these are all we, we are into a prison no snare like infatuation no torrent like greed right verse 252 it is easy to see the faults of others we we know them like like a chaff it is hard to see our own we hide them as a gambler hides a losing draw how beautiful this is so uh, we know it like a chaff is basically when you blow the you know the grain so that the chaff gets separated from the uh, from the grain so we vigorously blow blow no uh, so 
it's very easy we vigorously talk about the you know uh, the negative qualities of other people and everything and you know that we do but we we openly do that right and what we do is our own faults we try to hide them we don't talk about them like a buddha is giving an example ga- gambler who is hiding a losing draw right so this is buddha is rocking the example verse 253 but when one keeps dwelling on the faults of others his own compulsions grow worse making it harder to overcome them so the more you focused on seeing the faults of others the more of our own faults they keep growing right see it's it's what that's why buddha's path is of mindfulness it's like if you uh, think about a darkness if there is darkness then there are cockroaches and everything they just you know they germinate and everything but if you make the place light light turn on the light make the place airy make the ventilation then they cannot germinate then they run away so similarly what we have to do is that we have to lighten up our own self our own latent defilements are so much in our unconscious that these latent defilements we we know our own faults we know our shadow side our dark side i have a dark side you have a dark side through mindfulness of our feelings our emotions our cravings our body satyapatana sutra right we will be able to observe them and we will be able to get rid of them but if we keep focusing on others faults what we are doing is that we are letting our own defilements grow right because anything which is negative quality is unchecked it will keep on growing so only by the light of mindfulness we can ensure that they don't grow and they diffuse and second thing is so we will, we and second thing is the the wrong thing that we do is that practicing idle speech false speech gossip this is a violation of the noble eight right speech uh, that path in the noble eight fold path so we build up karma when we gossip talk negative about other people see always it's like said that everyone is a fool in someone else's opinion right so we need to be careful right at least we need to protect our own, our own self by not talking about too much see some other here you need to discuss and talk but don't don't dwell too much on the faults of others that's what my lesson is right verse 254 255 buddha says there is no path in the sky there is no refuge in the world for those driven by their desires but the disciples of the buddha live in freedom there is no path in the sky there is no refuge in the world for those driven by their desires all is change in the world but the disciples of the buddha are never shaken right so buddha is basically saying that if you are driven by desires here and there then then you will be swept away right there is no refuge there is no protection for you but if you are a disciple of the buddha and if you follow buddha's teachings right so disciple of the buddha we don't mean by like that those who worship the buddha buddha never said worship me it's people who started worshiping that's not the teaching of the buddha so buddha those who de- disciples of the buddha what my understanding is those who follow the path that is given by the buddha right who know who know and who practice and contemplate that everything is impermanent so if we contemplate that everything is impermanent then we will never be shaken who will be shaken is when who thinks that everything is imp- is permanent so buddha's fundamental teaching is that everything is changing so those who practice on the path those who meditate they will not be shaken because they know they they have the right view right they have the right view of seeing that everything is going to change then if everything is changing why they will be perturbed right okay 240 255 is happened now we come to the verses where the theme is established in dharma verse 256 257 though they are not following dharma who resort to violence to achieve their purpose but those who lead others through non violent means knowing right and wrong may be called the guardians so important is those who resort to violence they are not practicing the dharma because the first thing buddha said the first precept no killing right no violence right so people who practice non violence and lead the others they are practicing guardians of the dharma now buddha says Okay, Buddha now talks about the qualities of people who are the real practitioners of the dharma. Right? One who is wise because he talks a lot, talks a good deal. They are wise. One who is not wise because he talks a good deal. They are wise who are patient and free from hate and fear. 
right so who is wise who is free from this defilement not the one who talks too much right verse 259 dharma is not upheld by talking about it dharma is upheld by living in harmony with it even if one is not learned right so there is there here buddha is talking about see in buddhism what has there is that in, in, the path has been ignored the path that buddha has said that has been ignored so there are two things that has happened one way is that people have started worshiping and doing the rituals and all about the buddha and everything that is not buddhism that is not the teaching second thing what is there is so they construct the temples and statues and you know worship that is not yes worship as a as a honor as a reverence as a teacher but not the blind worship which people have been doing now second way is they go into intellectual side of things here is theoreticizing or well, theoreticizing is a wrong word but they make theory of everything intellectual analysis that is also wrong so don't think that dharma is is not something to be talked about right it is upheld by living so it's all about buddha is talking about the importance of practice of the dharma and that is for all of us it is important to understand that buddha stressed the importance of practice in daily life of the noble eightfold path so we have to practice it verse 260 gray hair does not make an elder one can grow old and still be immature so the very fact that people think that you know the person who has gone old and who has a lot of gray hair who is learned buddha is saying no person who is learned is the person who actually implements the dharma right so there i will end lot of interesting verses are there after this and i'll cover cover it in the next uh, video uh, so this is from 241 to 260 i have uh, completed if you have any thoughts comments feedback what is your learning from these verses do share in the comment section i will be very glad to hear it uh, listen to it read it and reply to it uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye